Hey everyone, Paul Simon here, welcome back. In today's tutorial, we are continuing our journey with Render Studio by diving deeper into realistic rendering in Onshape. Just a quick heads up, this video is part of a series, so what you're seeing on screen is actually the result of what we did in the previous video. So if you're wondering how we got to this point, no worries, just check the description below to find part one. Now, in today's video, we've got a lot to cover. We'll explore powerful features like branching and merging, configurations, updating renders as the model evolves, custom backgrounds, and even a bit of collaboration with Dave, a fictional colleague I created especially for the occasion. Well, speak of the devil, Dave just messaged me. It popped up right here on my screen, inside on shape. So Dave's letting me know that he's finished working on the configurations and, more interestingly, is designed a newer, more modern version of the assembly. So if I'm reading this right, Dave's basically saying that the blue model we spent about 10 minutes rendering in the first video is already outdated. There is a new, more modern version of it. But that's not an issue. The good news is we don't need to redo the entire render. We'll just update it later on. But for now, let's just take a closer look at this new version. Dave even tagged the model directly in the comment, so all we have to do is click the link and it will take us straight to his workspace. Let me just uh, activate one of my named views, predefined named views. That's a super handy tool for quickly switching to a specific orientation. They even support section views and perspective. And by the way, you can also create named views directly in Render Studio, and they are even more powerful there because they store full scene settings like depth of field, camera position and rotation, field of view, tone mapping, background, and much more. All right, so as you can see, we have immediate access to Dave's configuration setup in the top left corner. And from there, we can easily switch between the different versions, you know, the old one, the modern one, and even adjust specific parameters, such as the size of the holes here. And the same applies in the part environment. If we switch to the part studio, those configurations are also available. You know, in fact, this is the original configuration we used in the assembly. Actually, this gives me the perfect opportunity to show you probably one of my favorite tools in Onshape, which is the Compare tool. To access it, just open the Versions and History panel on the left. And, and by the way, this is where you can find the entire history of your projects, you know, all your versions, your branches, and so on. Kind of like um, GitHub, if you want to think about it that way. Right, so here you'll notice that my colleague created a dedicated branch, which is the yellow branch, specifically to work on this new modern version. Meanwhile, I've been working on the blue branch, which is the main branch here. And what's really cool is that Onshape lets you compare those two branches directly, so no need to guess what has changed anymore. So right now, it tells me there are no differences at all, which makes sense because we are comparing the exact same thing. So we need to change the configuration in order to compare the old version with the new one. And now we can see the differences highlighted in color on the screen. So it's going to be very easy for you to track how the design evolves over time. What I want to do now is bring all of Dave's design and configuration work into my own workspace and update my realistic render. And once again, it's super simple. I'm just going to merge Dave's yellow branch into mine. I'm going to quickly pick what I want to keep or overwrite, hit the merge button, and boom, that's it. Just like that, no need to redo anything on my end. And as you can see, I've got full access to the new design and the configurations right away. Now, before we go any further, there is one key step here. We need to create a version of the document. Why? Because Render Studio needs a version to know exactly which state of the design to use when bringing paths or assemblies into the scene. I'm going to give it a name, uh, let's say Merge from Configuration Walk, from Dave. And just like that, it creates a new version in the history. Kind of like a bookmark that I can now reference in Render Studio. So let's jump back into Render Studio. 
You'll notice that Onshape already notifies me. You can see the blue icon next to the assembly reference. So it's telling me that there is a newer version available to link to. And I get the option to update if I want to. All I have to do is right click, choose update link document and hit update to latest. And that's it. Render Studio will reload the scene and there you go. At first glance, it might seem like nothing changed, but if you look closely, you'll notice the assembly icon is different. There is a little blue table now, showing that this assembly is actually the newly configured one. Another thing you might have noticed is that the blue icon turns black, showing that I'm now referencing the latest version available. Alright, so what happens now if I change the configuration? Let's try that. So first, of course, we'll switch to the modern style. And for the holes, uh, we'll go with the M6 and M8. I'm also going to adjust the size of the wooden block, let's say 60, and we'll keep the logo option checked. And that's it. Just as expected, Render Studio reloads the scene and I don't lose any of the work I've done so far. No need to start the whole rendering process over again. Alright, so let's disable the depth of field and let's also remove the tabletop since next we'll be diving into how to add a custom background to our scene. So changing the background is as easy as going from a solid color of white to choosing an image. And as you can see, Onshape lets me pick from images already available in my document. I already imported a background earlier, so it's ready to go. But if you want to do the same, you will need to import a background into your document first. And don't forget to create a version so it shows up in the selection list. Now, clearly this is in the wrong place, so we are going to reposition the model. If you have a space mouse, this is probably going to be easier. But even without one, you can still do this fairly quickly. To position everything precisely in space, I would suggest using the position and rotation tool we covered in the first video. By the way, the background I'm using here was generated with AI. So yeah, if you're wondering why it looks a bit off, like that strange pair of scissors on the right side, that's why. Now, when choosing a background, I strongly recommend using high-resolution images for your final renders. The better the image, the more realistic it's going to be, especially when combined with proper lighting. So if you want the best quality, you should go with something like a RAW file or a clean JPEG right out of the camera. Now, for lighting, it really helps to choose an HDR or EXR that matches your background. You know, things like color tone and shadow softness make a big difference. Render Studio already has hundreds, so there is plenty to experiment with. If you want even more options, check out polyhaven.com. They've got a huge free library you can use. You can also create your own custom lighting right inside Render Studio. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to see how to do that. Alright, let's see if we can make this look better with a different environment. So let's start with an indoor one. Um, let's pick the boiler room. And the result is not bad, okay. Oh, nice. I see there is actually a carpentry shop environment in the library. That makes way more sense here. So let's give it a try. Okay, this one looks pretty good. It's a bit brighter on top, which really brings out the details. And the shadows add a nice touch as well. Maybe just a little too dark overall, but we can tweak that in the environment panel. Alright, now I just want to take a moment to clarify an important point because I see this mistake all the time. People often try to use EXR or HDF files as their background. Now, these files are amazing for lighting your model. They handle shadows, reflections and the overall mood of your scene. But they are not meant to be your background image. If you use them as the background, it usually ends up looking blurry or unrealistic. That's where a backing plate comes in, you know, a real image, like a JPEG that gives you the actual visible background behind your model. So here's the simple rule. Use EXR and HDF file for lighting 
and pair it with backing plate for the background. Okay, so the result looks great. Our product blends nicely into the environment. We're ready to render the scene. So I'm going to go for an 8K PNG at production quality. And uh, as we saw earlier in the first video, the image is going to appear in the bottom right of the document next to our first render. Another quick tip for you, I recommend creating a folder to store your renders. Here I'm creating a folder named Render and I'm placing everything related to my rendering work inside it. So that includes my two images, the Render Studio and the Render Assembly. All right, so next step is to let my colleague Dave know that I'm done with the renders. And to do that, I'm just going to reply to his comment and let him know that I'll make them available to the team via a shared publication. The only thing left now is to add the images to the publication. So let's go to the document page. And by the way, notice that I use labels a lot. I find them super handy to keep track of my different projects. For example, I've got my rendering label right up here and inside it, my rendering repository publication. I've already dropped quite a few of my favorite renders in there, like the jackhammer or the RC car. And I included a link in the description if you'd like to check them out. Now, at the bottom here, I already set up an empty folder. I'll just rename it so it's easier to find later. And that's where I'll insert the new images. Don't forget, you will need to create a version to be able to access the new renders. Onshape makes that super easy to do on the fly, and then it's just a matter of selecting the images and dropping them into the new folder. I'll just double check that the publication is already shared with the engineering team, and it is, perfect. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time and happy on shaping.